From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Very Mark, starting from humble beginnings 40 years ago, has successfully transitioned from seller and distributor of direct response television products into a diversified retail corporate leveraging and ever-expanding platform. Natasha Oerendahl tells us more. Verimark not only has an extensive retail footprint across 79 Verimark Direct outlets and in excess of 1,700 individual stores in major retail giants, but now the group has set its sights on reviving its international growth strategy, as well as developing further diversification, including e-commerce. Verimark CEO Michael van Straten tells us more. In terms of our expansion, there is a, a, a natural expansion for our own retailers that we work with, that they open extra stores, whether it's up in Africa. And also we have just started uh, in the last 12 months reactivating our international business uh, and by exhibiting at four overseas shows. Uh, the response were phenomenal. We still believe there's other opportunities in Africa that we also are, want to focus on, because uh, clearly uh, I've seen so many of the overseas Europeans or Americans trying to do that. I think us being uh, African-based, we have a much better understanding, having uh, really grown up in, 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 in this part of the world. Verimark has a purpose-built centralized distribution center based in Randburg, which, together with its improved systems and distribution capability, ensures efficient delivery to its customers. The group recently underwent a move to the 13,000 meter squared warehouse which serves as a distribution hub for all the company's activities. When Verimark started 40 years ago, I think we worked out of a garage. But uh, you know, if you look at uh, how growth comes with, uh, with the restraints of uh, warehousing facilities, and, and uh, you know, we've done these changes a few times already, where we initially were in Santon City, and then we were in Cromerville, then we were in Midrand, and then in Stradon Park. And every, uh, every seven, eight years virtually, you find that you outgrow the existing facility. We were operating, before we moved here, out of about five different sub-little warehouses, including the main one, which was about 4,000, 4, 4,500 square meter. This particular one is, uh, the warehouse is 10,000 square, square meter, and, and the office facility is a three to three and a half thousand. So it's about 13, 14,000 square meter. And, uh, uh, you know, we're now in our third year. I think we're already up to 80% uh, capacity, uh, meaning that we've actually utilized, uh, you know, when we moved in here, we were probably on 50%. And uh, it shows you that the growth is there. And, and clearly, you know, um, it's something that you need to continuously look at and say, listen, what is the next level? Uh, at this stage, this is sufficient, and we still have spare capacity for, for, for growth, local growth moving forward. Other news making headlines. In Zawa critical for policy engagement, economic growth well below government expectations, and Ramaphosa moves to reclaim radical economic transformation from those misusing the term. With the policy environment changing as a result of global and local competition, consulting firm Cova Advisory believes that this year's manufacturing in Daba can play a significant role to assist industry in staying abreast of the changes. I think from, from Cova Advisory's perspective, being involved in Indaba um, shows, gives, pro, uh, gives us profile. Okay? Um, and also gives us an opportunity to network with um, government stakeholders, specifically senior government stakeholders from Minister, Director General, in an informal setting to talk about issues which we are of uh, common interest to us. Also for us to network with uh, senior gov uh, government and business leaders, um, um, also in an informal setting to, to obviously talk about how, one is how we can assist them, okay? and also how government can assist in business and um, government can work together to grow the manufacturing sector. Barely missing a recession, South Africa saw its slowest economic growth rate in 2016 since the 2009 recession, when economic growth contracted according to CISA's biannual economic and capacity survey for July to December. The major highlights from the report um, would be around the earnings that um, for the first six more the last six months of 2016. Um, there was quite a sharp decline. It was the largest decline we've seen since 2010-2011 of 5.2% in real terms compared to the same period in 2015. Um, however, although that is quite a sharp decline, overall earnings um, for the last five or seven years has been fairly flat. So moderate growth, not sharp declines as we've seen in the contracting industry. So although the decline is seen as a negative, I think overall the industry has been quite buoyant um, considering the broader economic environment. 
Deputy President Sol Ramaphosa has moved to reclaim the phrase radical economic transformation from those who he said were misusing and misrepresenting it as part of a paid-for publicity offensive. Part of the problem, though, with the current discourse and conversation on a radical economic transformation is that the term has often been misused and in some circles misrepresented but a number of other people have also misunderstood it. As a democratic nation, we need to ensure that we should not be distracted or even sidetracked by the misuse of the term. What we need to do is to go beyond slogans, is to go to the heart of the matter and look at what needs to be done to redress the imbalances of the past. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.